saving the planet and the environment is only number 20 on people's priorities. That's a big problem. Before we do anything about saving the planet, we're going to straighten out the economy. We're going to solve the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. We never get to the real causes. It's because society is only dealing with symptoms. We can't deal with long-term problems. It's always take the shortcut. And I think the solution is to, is to simplify your life. We opened a, a new store years ago, and at the time we were not doing organic cotton. We were not leading an examined life. And within a couple days, our employees started getting headaches, and they're complaining. So we shut the store down. We brought in an environmental engineer, and he said, your air circulation system isn't working well, and you're recirculating the same air. And in that air is formaldehyde, which is a toxic chemical that's used on clothing to make it non-shrink and non-wrinkling. It's used on all cotton clothing. That kind of started us thinking, well, what goes into making clothing? We went and visited some cotton fields in California here, and then it was, it was a dead zone. A spray, uh, crop dusters and planes flying over our heads, spraying us, and uh, the lakes are so toxic they have to hire people to sit on chairs with guns to scare the birds. Once I found all this stuff out, I said, I don't want to be in business if I have to do this. I think every company has a responsibility for not only knowing what goes into the product, but doing something about it once you find out that you're doing something wrong. Now let's go check out fabric development. When we found out how really heinously polluting cotton is, this was a part where we were able to go find relationships with organic cotton farmers and begin to make our commitment. So that's what happens when you start leading an examined life in business. But if you want to feed your family healthy food, you can't just go to the supermarket and just buy a bunch of vegetables because some of them come from Mexico where they still use DDT or they come from Algeria. You have to know the farmer. So children, please listen, this world is yours. This message is too deep to ignore. What's always intrigued me about working here is our purpose, is to build the best clothes. So when we talk about our brand, we never compromise quality. We believe that one of the only few companies in the outdoor retail industry that has an in-house lab, we're able to find results, whether there will be button testing, uh, color fastness, waterproof, between 80, probably 93% of the fabrics we actually reject. They don't meet our standards. It's gonna come around. What goes around comes around. Instead of owning a ski jacket that sits in the closet for nine months out of the year, own a jacket that you can ski in and it's and it works perfectly well for skiing, but it doesn't say ski all over it, you know? And you can wear it on top of your sport coat going to work. That's the responsible way to do it. We wouldn't be in business if all our customers said, okay, I'm gonna stop consuming, which is fine. But what we tell our customers is buy something that'll last forever. You know, the, the key to consumerism is just consume less, but consume better. I think that's the answer. What I'd like to show you next is Fletcher Chenard Designs. And this is where we build surfboards. I have some friends who have gone back to riding a surfboard. It's just a flat board, no plastic on it, no fins on it, nothing. And the difference is that they have to adapt themselves to that surfboard, but they have become so good that they're better than 99% of the surfers that are out there in their high-tech plastic boards. You adapt yourself, truly learn something instead of trying to buy it. It's two different ways of approaching it. One is the Western way where you buy all the stuff. The other one is kind of an Eastern way where you change yourself and you become a, per a better person when you change yourself. You evolve. I think it's called evolution. <laughs> for me. If you're a big corporation, 
and you want to start having open offices and you want to start having a let my people go surfing policy, you can't do it overnight. It's, it's impossible. It has to start with the gatekeeper. It has to start with who you hire. The philosophy of let my people go surfing is real because we've dedicated space to keep all the surfboards for our employees. So if you want to go surfing, you roll down to the bottom of the stairs and get your surfboard and uh, we keep them here and out to the beach we go. It's super cool. If you brought in a psychiatrist and did a psychological profile of all the people that are working here, you'd find that they're extremely individualistic. So right outside the door here, we have a volleyball court. So no matter what department you're in, we always have games going on out here. And uh, if the surf's flat, we, we play volleyball. It can't be a top-down management system that says do this or do that because individuals will just, they'll have a passive aggressive response and do nothing. So it has to be done with consensus. You have to have everybody know and agree that we're all going in one direction. Patagonia's been a company that's always been very aware of working conditions and has sourced our product with, I would say, quite a high level of integrity. We always had an awareness of social responsibility. We want to incorporate quality assurance, you know, as one, um, social compliance as another, uh, the environment. We don't say that we're a green business. We continue to reduce environmental impacts where we can, but really cause no unnecessary harm. And the solar panels are a wonderful opportunity to show that commitment. Well, it does shade all of our single occupant vehicles. You look out in the parking lot, there's SUVs and big cars out there. The majority of our employees here are wearing Levi's, which are not organic cotton. It's very hard to get that across that I am the problem. We have a corporate initiative to do everything we can to support the environment in a positive way. We've done some energy calculations and we know for every one pound of reprieve yarn that we recycle, we're conserving 61,000 BTUs of energy. And we also are working with uh, some partners collecting clear plastic polyester water bottles. Together we combine our waste and these bottles into our recycled polyester product. We recycle everything from our tubes for our yarn packages um, to all the plastics that is used for shipping. My company here, I try to minimize the damage that we do, but we're, we're still polluters. So I decided to start an organization of encouraging other companies to do the same thing. And it's called 1% for the Planet. So we take 1% of our sales, not our profit, and we give that to environmental NGOs that are really doing the good work. And now we have well over a thousand members. I found out the other day that the top five largest companies are all experiencing the best year we've had in years. Our business is up eight or nine percent over last year. <laughs> it's, it's karma, you know. This is where it all started as Yvonne Chenardis, one of the world's greatest mountain climbers, was building his pitons right out of this shed right here. And he liked this location here because, as you know, we're right next to the beach out here. It's just right out front of Surfer's Point. And this is the birth of Patagonia. This is the new economy. And if I can show other companies that we can do well during a deep recession, then they want to come here and say, hey, I want to do something similar. And so it exists to influence other companies. The, the consumer has choices now. You know, you go to a market and there's salt from one company and there's salt from another company. It's just salt. But if you know that one company is more responsible in, in their business practices and the price is the same, everything's equal, you buy that. We need to do to turn things around. And the revolution has to begin from the bottom. And we have to begin with agriculture. You know, it's 40% of the causes of global warming. It's our very survival. I mean, you don't need clothes. You don't need a big house. You don't need all this stuff. You need to eat, and agriculture can show us the way. Lifesaver. Your time and really straight. Our customers buy Patagonia products because they like the values behind the company. 
That's 10% of the people. The other 90% buy our products because they like the color or they like the style. And they... So if you wait for the customer to tell you to green your company, you're way too late. And we can't do it without the government, but... Single individual can have a big impact. We've seen that with you know, famous people and stuff like that. But if you're a writer, you should you know, be writing to influence people. If you're a good speaker, you should be speaking out. If you're a doctor, you should be, you know, spend a year with Doctors Without Borders. You know, you can feel good about yourself and you feel like, okay, I'm part of the solution rather than part of the problem. And you can sleep at night. And now we will run with smiles. In the 70s, we used to say that he who dies with the most toys wins. But you know what? It's the opposite. He who dies with the least toys wins because the more you know, the less you need. With the sun, I can hear my name, baby born On the cloud within the sky beneath the door Oh, why serenade the door Serenade the door. Serenade the nature loves diversity. It doesn't like globalism. <laughs> Although, I try to eat locally, but I try to drink globally. <laughs> <laughs>